Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. This is going to be our second SAS tutorial. And if you missed the first tutorial, that was an introduction to SAS Studio, just how to navigate SAS Studio on demand for academics. I recommend that you look at that tutorial if you need help navigating that SAS Studio software before you go to this tutorial, which is going to actually get us started with SAS itself. So I'm just gonna do a brief presentation and then we're gonna hop right into SAS Studio on demand for academics to look at a couple of lines of code. So this section is gonna be getting started with SAS. And just so you all are aware, I used the little SAS book, the sixth edition. So this is gonna comprise the first half of chapter one. The next half of chapter one will be in the next tutorial. Okay, so let's start off from the very, very, very beginning. What is a SAS program? A SAS program, put simply, is a series of statements that are executed in order. So yes, as you start coding, you will realize that it does matter which statement goes where in your program. And what is a statement? A statement is an instruction for SAS, and it always ends with a semicolon. That's right. What did I just say? It ends with a semicolon. So in order for you to recognize a SAS statement, look out for those semicolons. So for our first example, this is three lines of code. And so how many statements do you see in this data step? We're going to go over data steps and procedure steps in a future tutorial, but right now we're just focused on identifying how many statements there are. And if you said three, you are correct, you can just count the semicolons. So data test is one statement. The set SAS help airline is one statement known as the set statement. And then the run is going to be your third statement. So that is what SAS programs and SAS statements are. Now, it's always best practice to comment your code as you code. This is not only beneficial for you, but anybody who needs to look at your code or for some reason, if this is in an employer situation, if you are out on vacation, someone else can take over your code and easily know what the code is doing. So there are two types of comments. One is going to start with an asterisk and end with a semicolon. And the other one is going to start with a slash asterisk and end with an asterisk slash. So those stars are going to be in the inside. It's like those stars are hugging the statement. And these comments are going to show up green in SAS Studio. And I'm going to show you that in SAS Studio itself after we go through this presentation. So this is just a snapshot of SAS Studio on demand for academics. And as you can see that line two has that second type of comment. It has that slash star, the comment itself, and then a star slash. Yes, I call asterisk stars because asterisks can be a tongue, uh, mouthful. And then on line four, we have that one single comment, which just starts with a star and ends with a semicolon. So you have two comments here. All right, now since we went over what a SAS program was, what a statement is, and what comments are, now we can move to the SAS data set itself. And there's plenty of SAS data sets already built in for us to work with and play around with. So. A SAS data set you can think of as a table. The columns are called variables and the rows are called observations. Now, these data sets are stored in what we call SAS libraries. And if you watch the first tutorial, I went over where libraries are actually located in the SAS Studio software. So you can think of a data set as like a little book inside a library. Instead, it's not called a book, it's called a member. There are built-in SAS libraries already into SAS Studio, or you can define your own library with a lib name statement. Some of you guys may have to define your own library if you're doing this for a college course in order to access your professor's data sets. 
So if you need help accessing your specific data sets, make sure you touch base with your professor or you can just Google the lib name statement. Your temporary SAS data sets are always stored in the work library. And we're going to go in more detail about libraries in a later tutorial. But just keep in mind that if you don't assign a library to your data set names, it automatically gets put into work. And at the end of every SAS state um, session, that work library is going to be deleted. And you're like, well, why, Jelly, would we want to delete data sets? That's because if you're just playing around with data sets, you don't really know exactly what you're doing. Basically, you're exploring the data before you actually do any analysis on it. You may not want to keep storing all of that exploratory data. It's just for you to look at it and it takes up a lot of storage. So you want to just be mindful of company resources and computing power and things of that nature. Now, within the SAS data sets, there are two types of variables. So remember those variables are the columns. There's a character variable, which is going to any value that has a special character, like an exclamation point, et cetera, or a letter is instantly a character variable. Numeric variables are numbers that you can usually perform some type of math on. OK, so, yes, certain numbers can be considered characters, for instance, a zip code. You wouldn't necessarily do subtraction or multiplication on people's zip codes. Right. So you would want to store the zip code variable as a character. So don't just think just because it's numbers, it's automatically numeric. That is not true. But one way that you can figure out if it's character or numeric, if you have missing data, and in the real world, a lot of times you will have missing data, is if the data is missing, it is a blank there. It's going to be character, or if it's left aligned in the output screen. If the data is missing and it's a period in its place, it's going to be numeric, or it's going to be right aligned in the output screen. Now, that is just a quick overview of SAS. And let's just quickly go through the variable rules before we hop into SAS Studio. A variable name has to be 32 characters or less. It must start with a letter or underscore. And it can only include letters, numbers, and underscores, no special characters. So let's take a quick glance to SAS Studio on demand for academics. Like I said, if you have not gotten acquainted to this interface, there is the first tutorial or the first lesson that you can go back to. We have our server files and folders, our libraries down here. And of course, if you wanted to start a new program, you just hit this and hit SAS program. Now, this was the example that we had in the PowerPoint. We had the comments. We have the three statements that end with semicolons. We have a, the second type of comments. And then when we run this, I'm creating a data set called test. I run this and now here's the output data. I have my variables. There are three variables, right? And these variables are date, air, and region. And there are multiple observations, right? So the observations are the rows, the variables are the columns. I see that date is a date. If I look at the columns on the left-hand side, I see if I click region, region is a character type. If I click air, air is a numeric type. And I also know this because air is right aligned, which means that it is numeric. And region is left aligned, which means that is this, that it's character. Now, where was this data set stored? In our libraries, of course, because as we said, data sets are like books. They always are stored in a library. Since this is a temporary data set, it was actually stored in my work library. I hope you guys enjoyed learning all about SAS programs and variables and getting a quick introduction to the SAS language itself. In the next tutorial, we're going to go over how to actually code our first data and prop steps. Have a great day and thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly.